Hello everyone, welcome to Talk Here with Us Lads, your favorite health program on television. Today we are bringing it to you from the Alex Ekweme Federal University Teaching Hospital in Abakaliki, Southeast Nigeria. And I'm in the office of a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist who are going to be discussing a topic that is very, you know, I would say is of much interest to a lot of persons, especially women. We'll be talking about fibroid. I know you can't wait to learn more about fibroids, what are the risk factors, you know, how do you detect it, what are the treatment options, and of course, everything you need to know from the expert himself. We'll be right back after the break. Health Agenda 2023. The Nigerian health system is becoming weaker with the mass exodus of medical doctors, nurses, and other skilled health workers out of the country. In February and March 2023, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect the next president and state governors, respectively. This provides an opportunity for the election of leaders who will help to strengthen the health sector and reposition it to deliver quality healthcare services at all levels. We present to you Health. Agenda 2023, an interview segment on this program for presidential and governorship candidates to discuss their health agenda before the electorates. For sponsorship and participation, reach out through any of the contact details displayed on your screen. Welcome back to Talk Here with Dr. Lazio Favorite Health Program on television. Five bread. what do you know about it? What goes through your mind anytime you hear about it? Is somehow dreadful to a lot of women and sometimes uh, many of them that get diagnosed don't want to hear the word surgery but what are the things that cause it what are the risk factors what could be done is it treatable here in nigeria this is what i'm going to be discussing with my guest a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist dr adeni adebayo thank you very much dr Lars. Right, uh, so fibroid is a health condition a lot of persons are interested in. Women are interested in it because it is found in the womb. And men are also interested because of the potential of some of them to affect fertility. So let's talk about it. What is fibroid and what are the risk factors? Uh, welcome, welcome viewers. Uh, fibroid is is a is an abnormal tissue in the in the womb which which is which is medical which in the medical terms we call uh, uh, the the uh, uterus so this is this is a fibrous tissue the name is actually the derived from a fibrous tissue that's why it is called fibroid it's an abnormal tissue that de develop in the in, 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 in the womb it is actually common in in all women the commonest risk factor risk factor for for uterine fibroid is is being a, a woman because it's it's only a woman that has the uterus okay this is common to 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 the majority of of, of of women the other the other factor, it has also been been reported to be to 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 be uh, genetic. Some 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 genes have been have been, have been have been linked to it. We have also discovered that uh, women that don't give back early enough mm -hmm. tend to have uterine uh, uh, fibroid because the womb. Uh, uh, having been having been without any uh, activity for for a long time, tends to uh, uh, attract the development of this uh, this uh, uh, abnormal abnormal tissue. So these are these are the commonest uh, risk factors we have we have uh, uh, identified with uh, 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 development of, of fibroid in, in in a woman. Is being black. A risk factor in, in terms of race because some studies suggest that it's more common among uh, black people compared to Caucasians. Yes, uh, studies have actually shown shown that uh, being be, 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 being black is is uh, predisposes a woman 
to 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 having uterine fibroid more 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 than in, in, in Caucasian because the incidence has been has been found to be higher in, in the black than mm. than in, uh, in 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 Caucasian and this has been attributed to some so, uh, some genes which is which are peculiar to to black to the black race rather than those of uh, the Caucasians. Okay, uh, so that's good to know. Um, now looking at it, how would someone suspect that there could be uterine fibroid? Um, what are those symptoms or signs that a woman may begin to see uh, before one begins to suspect? Could it be a uterine fibroid? A uh, detection of uterine fibroid uh, actually uh, can be uh, can 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 it, uterine fibroid can be can be detected based on uh, the symptoms the woman uh, has. It can be detected uh, as, as an incidental finding. Okay. Some women uh, go for a scan, ultrasound scan, for a different uh, 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 different reason. During the uh, ultrasound scan, they are, they are told that they have a uterine fibroid. Mm -hmm. This set of women actually have no symptoms. It's just an incidental finding. But women that have, that have uh, symptoms, some of the symptoms of, of, of uterine fibroid uh, uh, include uh, abdominal distension. Mm -hmm. Some women just find out that, that their abdomen is, is, is in, 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 increasing in size. Mm -hmm and the neighbors start asking whether they are pregnant and they know that they are not actually pregnant so they present based on that abdominal distension but the commonest symptom that that women present with is actually menstrual period uh, irregularity some some of them have heavy menstrual flow mm. which which makes them to to have a shortage of blood so the their 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 menses flow more than more than the required number of days. Initially, before they have uterine fibroid, they might have been having menstrual flow for three to four days. When mm -hmm. the menses when the 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 the, the fibroid uh, start developing, the their menstrual flow may their menstrual flow may, may increase in number of days. Mm -hmm. Aside from that, it may also increase in in, in quantity. Uh, uh, women that have been using two, 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 the two to three pads b b before, which are mildly soaked, may, may discover that they are now using more number of pads in, in a day that are more heavily soaked than before. And also, they may be passing uh, uh, blood clots in, 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 in their menses, which is not usual with normal, uh, no, 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 normal menses. So, so this may make them pre 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 present and in the in the process of evaluation, they can be discovered to have to now have a, 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 a uterine fibroid. Some pre present uh, because of uh, infertility. In the process, mm -hmm. in the process of uh, of evaluating them for infertility, they are discovered to to have uterine fibroid. Even though we have discovered that uterine fibroid in itself is not a direct cause of infertility. Right. But but during this uh, the, 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 this process, if they are discovered, if, if they if they are discovered to have to, they may be discovered to have a uterine uh, fibroid. Uh, in some occasions, it may actually affect infertility because of the the, 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 the location, mm -hmm. because some of them that are located right inside the the womb, they may behave like like a a, 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 a contraceptive device which which actually prevent uh, 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 pregnancy mm -hmm. from from uh, from, uh, from from developing, but this is not a common cause of uh, infertility. Yes. So these are instances in which uh, uh, fibroid may be discovered. Some of them may not present in this way. It may be a intraoperative finding. Okay. Maybe the woman goes for surgery for other reason. Maybe cesarean section or other things or uh, hysterectomy for other reasons and during the surgery it is found that the woman has uterine fibroid. I think uh, you, you, you made very important points especially the relationship between uterine fibroid and infertility. A lot of persons uh, used to think of course erroneously that every fibroid will affect uh, 
their fertility and a lot of times they are also very scared to even go for the treatment because some also usually feel that oh if i go for the treatment it could also tamper with their fertility so it's, it's, it's really good that you made this point that or it's not a common cause of infertility that it depends on the location so now talking about the location uh, i think the one that is at the fallopian tube that you know could possibly affect uh, fertilization and infertility so what which areas of the womb you know are fibroids commonly located especially uh, the ones you've seen much more in your practice Fibroid can be located. The the, 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 womb, the womb is divided into in, in, into three aspects: the innermost part, the intermediate part, which is the the, mus, the muscle part, and the outer part. So fibroid can be located in any of this any of this part. Uh, innermost part where which is the lining of the of, of the womb, just 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 behind the lining mm. of, of the womb. Then inside the muscle, which can make the muscle bulk to to be unnecessarily uh, uh, increased. Mm. The, 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 then uh, uh, just just be, just below the, the uh, 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 outer layer, the the innermost layer is is what we call the uh, submucous layer. Then the 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 muscular layer. Then the uh, uh, subcellular layer, which is the the outermost outermost layer. So. Fibroid can exist in any of these, any of any of these uh, uh, the, the, the three layers, and their presentation and how they affect the woman are actually uh, 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 depend on this on this the location. location. Exactly. Okay. All right. So I, I think we have to take a break here, and when we return, we we'll talk more about uh, the treatment options uh, for uterine fibroid. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. We've been talking about uterine fibroid, and I'm still here with Dr. Adeni Adebayo. So, uh, Dr. Adebayo, what are the treatment options for uterine fibroid, and what has been the success rate? Because a lot of persons are usually scared of, uh, you know, the option of surgery. So, from your experience, what's been the success rate uh, for this? Each of the options you'll be talking about. Uh, uh, th 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 thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Lars, for having me. The treatment options for uh, uterine fibroid actually depends on the presentation. Uh, we have talked about the modes of presentation. Those ones that are incidental findings, like a woman that that has been sent for uh, ultrasound for for other purposes that you just discovered and you know incidentally actually needs no no treatment she can be followed up with a serial ultrasound scan six monthly or three monthly to know whether it's growing or not growing uh, for those that that have a, a, a symptom also the ones that are de detected uh, just incidentally uh, intra that are intraoperative findings may not necessarily need uh, treatment because the purpose for the surgery might not have been uh, due to the fibroid except mm -hmm. there are some that are blocking the uh, oper operation sites but for those that have uh, symptoms Treatment depend. Uh, there are different modalities of treatment. It may be medical. It may be surgical. Medical medical treatment. We use drugs that, for example, those ones that uh, that affect menstrual period. You can we we use some drugs to to reduce the uh, uh, menstrual flow, and also if they have if is is also associated with uh, menstrual pain. Those drugs can, as well, reduce the menstrual pain associated with this uh, uterine fibroid, and they can they can be fine. So far, it's not affecting other uh, aspect of life, and it's not it's not uh, causing a serious health challenge. Right. Uh, before, also, okay. so, sorry. Before you move um, 
to the next option. Um, is it encouraged, is it an option, the medical option for women who are of reproductive age, given that you say it could alter their menstrual cycle and stuff like that? Yes, we use it, one, in women who, who refuse surgery. This can be an option. In women in, in which you are preparing them, you are preparing them for, uh, you want to prepare them for, uh, for surgery, mm. to make them stable for, for, uh, for surgery, because some of them might have bled uh, and they, are, they may not be hemodynamically stable for surgery. Okay. You want to use this drug to reduce their menstrual flow so that the blood, their blood can stay in the system and they can, you can build their, 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 their system and be more medically uh, uh, stable. Uh, before surgery. So there are dif uh, different reasons why medical, medical uh, treatment is, is used. And, and also, women that are close to um, uh, menopause, mm -hmm. uh, women that, that are close to menopause, you may want to use, and, and they don't want surgery, you want to use this medical, medical management to treat them uh, to the enter menopause because we know that uh, uh, fibroid after menopause they usually uh, uh, decrease in size mm. because they feed on the uh, reproductive uh, hormones Almost. and after menopause this hormone they reduce in, in, in quantity and the because of this the fibroid they don't they don't grow they don't grow further mm. so that so these are reasons why medical management may be uh, an option. The preferred option. Yes. We have uh, surgical management, we also have uh, radiological uh, management. Surgical management can be an uh, open surgery, it can also be laparoscopic uh, uh, surgery. The surgery it may be conservative, it may be, it may be uh, definitive. Conservative in the sense that you want to conserve the, the uterus for menstrual and reproductive purposes. But definitive, you want to remove the uterus because the reason fibroid is there is because the uterus is there. You remove the uterus, you take away the source of the fibroid. Mm -hmm. So for reproductive age women, we yeah, cons as, conservative as who, are who, are still, who still have desire, children, desire to have, to have children. more children. Okay. We uh, uh, conservative uh, med surgical option is more uh, preferred. Uh, pre preferred. So in, in this case, the the fibroid is removed while the the uh, uterus remains. This can be by laparoscopic surgery, minimal access surgery, whereby the a small uh, decision is made and an instrument, a laparoscopic instrument, is used to make incision in, this, in the womb and remove this, uh, this, this, this uh, fibroid. Uh, but op uh, also open surgery whereby the abdomen is open, the uterus is brought out, and this fibroid are removed one after the other. The uterus is repaired and, 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 and returned. These surgeries are very safe, even though women are afraid and seek different alternative uh, uh, options. They are very safe. He, uh, the same, the same uh, complications that apply to other surgeries apply to fibroid surgery. So uh, how, how safe, out of every 10 cases or every 100 cases, like how many could go without any major complication? Uh, in, in competent hands, out of, out of 100, 95 can go without um, uh, major complications. And the, the most common complication, complication of uterine fibroid is bleeding because these fibroid tissues are highly vascularized. So, and methods have been devised to reduce bleeding during this, this surgery. So out of, out of 100, mm. I can, if, if I'm uh, very conservative, I can see 95 or even 97 can go without any major complications. Complications that can arise with uh, fiber surgery include excessive bleeding, 
and because of this we usually request for blood before we before we start other complications injury to uh, adjacent organ like the bladder the uterus the ureters that that bring um, the pipes that bring um, urine. urine from the kidney to the to the uh, bladder these are adjoining tissues that may be affected during during the surgery, but well, adequate, adequate yes, it, 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 it's very rare. Adequate provision is usually made, especially in those big uh, fibroids, to to circumvent and if it ever happened, to 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 correct to correct them. But we must know that in every surgery, mm. death is is uh, is a complication. Although it 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 is not is not common, right? Uh, as it occurs in any surgery, death can occur. It's not especially very, from excessive bleeding, especially from from excessive bleeding, or sometimes after the surgery, um, uh, 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 embolism can develop, especially if the if it's an extensive surgery, mm -hmm. embolism. But this. There, there, there are prophylaxis against this, even, even though it's, it's sometimes still occur. Okay. Then other, other, other options of, uh, of, of treatment. Um, uh, we have um, yeah, uh, uterine artery embolization. This is a procedure in which uh, the coagulating substance is mm. injected into the uterine artery. The aim is to block the blood supply to the, to the uterus. Okay. When you block the blood supply to the uterus, the, the, main, the main muscles of the, of the uterus, they can get, they can get so, uh, their adequate supply from the collaterals, right. from the other small, small vessels that supply the uterus and can be okay. But because the fibrous tissue need high blood supply to survive. When you block this major blood supply to the uterus, the fibroid, because they cannot get enough nutrition, they shrink. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they, they, are, they shrink and they are expelled one after the other. Uh, some that are close into the inside of the uterus can be expelled via the vagina, but some that are inside the muscle can shrink and degenerate. So that is one modality of, of treatment. The, the other ones are uh, 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 radi radiological. Even this one is also, it's also a radiological, uh, procedure. radiological procedure, mm -hmm. uh, in, in intervention whereby the uterine artery is cannulated. The, uh, uh, the, 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 the other radiological um, uh, management is, 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 is one in, in which uh, um, uh, uh, high radio frequency is right. is uh, is uh, is uh, targeted to the to the uh, right. to the fibroid to, to 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 dissolve to dissolve them. Mm. Uh, these are these are uh, new uh, in, in, in intervention for uh, the management of trans fibroid, which will not necessarily involve an uh, open surgery, okay. and it can, it, this can can take care of the trans fibroid. Okay, that, 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 this really sounds good. So it talks about medical, surgical, and radiological. Uh, there are some myths, you know, some persons have about this. I don't want to go into them because it's like promoting those myths. But uh, are there drugs that someone can take and it dissolves the, the fibroid tissue? Because certain persons say, oh, they are promised somewhere that if you pay a certain amount, they give you drugs that is going to dissolve the tissues. Are there such drugs? This is, this is the problem we have uh, in uh, 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 educating people because this this uh, wrong uh, uh, information has been passed from patient to patient and from person to person. There is no there is no known drug today that is taken to make fibroid to disappear. Some patient, some persons have taken some Chinese drugs, some this drugs, some other drugs. What what this what we've discovered that these these drugs do is to to make some of these fibroids to change form. But they are there. They change they change form to instead of being solid, they become partly solid, partly partly uh, uh, 
uh, semi-solid. Mm. So, but the fibroids remain. They do not di disappear. They do not dissolve. They remain there. At the end of the day, they come for surgery, but by that time, it's more complicated because these drugs have actually affected the anatomy of the uterus. Mm. At the end of the day, some of them end up losing, losing their, their womb. These are, these are people that should have come for, for surgery and there will be no or minimal complications. Okay, uh, I think that uh, sounds good. I was well, assisted uh, in surgery, uh, you know, myometomy surgery. Uh, this patient carried it for eight years, uh, went about different solutions because she didn't want surgery. And um, even prayer houses went to give testimonials that the fibroid by faith had disappeared and all of that. You know, and still ended up with you know surgery eight years later. The womb, the tummy was so big, looking like multiple gestation as if she's carrying triplets and all of that. And that procedure took over three hours. And uh, forty seven uh you know Mama seeds. Yes, forty seven seeds were taken out of the various sizes. Of course, the, the procedure was successful. So that's just giving credence to uh, what, what you said about a lot of misleading information uh, when it comes, people are making a lot of money off patients, you know, feeding on their, their ignorance. And this is one of the reasons we are actually doing this program to uh, educate the people, educate our women and our men as well, you know, to have this accurate information. The experts have already explained that. Thank you, Dr. Adeni Adebayo, for you know, giving us time to share knowledge with our viewers about yeah. uterine fibroids. Thank you very much, Dr. Laz, for having me on, the, on this program. Thank you for watching up to this point. Uh, that's what we can take on uterine fibroids. I do hope that you've learned a lot. Do know that we still have this on our YouTube channel, Talk Health Niger TV. And you are free to watch it as many times as you wish and also share with your loved ones. Ensure that you always deal with the experts when it comes to management of any health condition that has to do with the womb. And these are the obstetricians and gynecologists. My name is Dr. Lars Is it same station, same time next week. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.